In poultry, their glucose metabolism and insulin is very different from other species. Their glucose concentrations are higher uh, than what we see in, in other mammals, and uh, they're considered to be somewhat insulin resistant. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Wamsley, and I'm joined by Dr. Spears. Hi, Dr. Spears. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? Doing well. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the work that you've been doing with Kimmin. Um, but first, let me do a little bit so we can get to know you. So um, it's a this or that. So fried or grilled chicken? Fried. Um, aisle or window seat? Ow. Scuba dive or skydive? Uh, neither. <laughs> <laughs> and then dog or cat? Uh, dog. How about broiler or turkey? Uh, hmm, that's a tough question. Uh, <laughs> I would go with turkeys, I think. Okay, yeah. I mean, and that's what we're going to be talking a good bit about today, right? Yes, uh-huh. Um, so, so Dr. Spears, you had, you've had a long career in, uh, the, the industry and, and academia and working in animal nutrition and you retired in, uh, 2012 from NC State. Is that right? And you're doing some work with Kimmin. Um, and so can you just give a little bit of background? Sure. Uh, I was involved with research and teaching in North Carolina State for about 32 years. Wow. I retired. And I've been active consulting ever since uh, with Kimmon, as well as uh, one other company. And uh, it's been challenging, but very, uh, it's been very good to work with Kimmon in terms of chromium propionate. Kimmon calls all poultry experts. You already know the key to a profitable operation is healthy, productive birds. Our team of poultry experts are driven by curiosity to develop science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash poultry to learn more. So Dr. Spears, getting into it, um, first question. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the mode of action with chromium propionate and um, some of the performance benefits that you would expect to see with broilers. Chromium propionate basically functions or chromium functions to increase insulin sensitivity in tissues that are susceptible to insulin. In poultry, their glucose metabolism and insulin is very different from other species. Their glucose concentrations are higher uh, than what we see in, in other mammals. And uh, they're considered to be somewhat insulin resistant. So it's, it's more difficult to study that in broilers. So what we did was we looked at it in broilers and turkeys. Uh, we looked at insulin, and, or not insulin, but glucose and other measures of insulin sensitivity in a fed state, a fasted state, and then a refed state. And where we see the biggest responses is in a refed state. And a refed state is when insulin would be more important in terms of metabolism. So, uh, you know, basically uh, in broilers, what we saw was when the animals were refed, uh, NEFA concentrations, fatty acid concentrations in the blood decreased more rapidly, indicating that the release of fatty acids from adipose tissue was switching over quicker so that fat was being laid down rather than leaving adipose tissue. And then in turkeys, there we saw the effect on glucose. In refed turkeys, uh, glucose decreased to a greater extent after feeding in uh, birds that got chromium. Oh, thank you. Interesting. Oh, in broilers, uh, you know, increased weight gain, five published studies, and those studies, uh, the average body weight gain or the bi average body weight at 35 days has been increased by about 80 grams hmm. and feed efficiency improved by about four points. Wow. Also, some of the studies have integrated increased breast muscle yield and reduced abdominal fat. And then there's also evidence that chromium in broilers can increase immunity based on serum immunoglobulin concentrations, as well as antibody titer response uh, to administration of a foreign protein into the body, such as sheep red blood cells. And then there's some data that can affect gut health. 
uh, particularly villus height and duodenum, which is important in terms of nutrient absorption. Sure. So you can obviously, that from the broad spectrum of, of those um, different parameters that you're looking at, you know, not only are you able to see from a, the a bench top, you know, lab work of imp, you know improvements or these differences in energy partitioning, but you can also then see it in the bird from the research that you guys have been looking at, yes. and so. Um, that's definitely from a standpoint of being able to get return on, you know, um, investment, then that's a really positive thing. Return on investment is quite good in both broilers and turkeys. Yeah. And so what about in thinking about chromium as a possible tool for the toolbox um, whenever uh, animals are in stress? Can you touch upon that and maybe the impact on cortisol levels in poultry? Uh, yes. The uh uh, anything that reduces insulin sensitivity uh, can result in greater responses to chromium. And heat stress is one of those. Crowding stress would be another. And disease pressure could be another. And basically, uh, they cause insulin animals to be more resistant to insulin. And therefore, there's a greater opportunity for chromium to have an effect. And the responses to chromium generally have been greater in stressed animals. Mm -hmm. Although in animals are not stressed, uh, we've also seen improvements in gain and also breast muscle yield, as well as speed efficiency. Okay. And so given that, um, seeing performance even when the animals aren't in stress, so would you, um, in your opinion, would you think that there's a year-round kind of value to having um, chromium propionate in, in diets in the poultry market? It would seem so. Uh, five studies have been published in broilers with chromium propionate. And on average, uh, chromium propionate increased uh, body weight, 35-day body weight gains by about 80 grams, and feed efficiency by four points. So that is, you know, quite large. Sure. And so um, there's been some recent approval, approval of this product um, in turkey diets, right? Can you give a little bit, bit of background and what that might mean into um, the, the turkey industry? Yeah, let me go back. It was approved for broilers in 2016, and then it was approved for turkeys this year, 2024. And uh, in the study that we did looking at safety and everything, uh, the 0.2 level, which is what's approved, 0.2 milligrams or 200 parts per billion, uh, it resulted after 84 days in a 400 gram increase in body weight and a seven-point increase in feed efficiency. So this is quite good, and the cost of providing chromium propionate for 84 days in turkeys was about 10 cents. Oh, wow. And the value of the increased body weight gain alone would be around a dollar. So that's a 10 to 1 return on investment, which is, I think, pretty good. Um, with the turkeys then, too, you said for 84 days of I inclusion, um, from what time point do you normally recommend that that would be included then? Well, we haven't done studies longer. Uh, those were started on day one, went through 84 days. And in that length of time, we chose to go in our what we considered our safety study. I see. And so um, is there a little bit of, I guess, can you explain the question in my mind is kind of the difference in the timing of approval for broilers versus turkeys? Was there anything to that or just, just getting the research done and just making sure that all the paperwork is in and kind of targeting a one market first and then going on to another? Or? Basically, uh, to get chromium propionate, all sources have to go through Food and Drug Administration. Sure. And for rollers, turkeys, cattle, and horses, chromium propionate is the only source that's been approved. And basically, it's about a four or five year project. First of all, we have to show that the chromium propionate in that species is increasing insulin sensitivity. Then we have to show that it's safe for the animal, even when fed at levels above the approved level. And we have to show that it doesn't accumulate in tissues to a point that would create a possible health, human health concern. So in all of these studies, we have to look at that, at that species, turkeys or broilers. We have to show insulin sensitivity. And then we have to analyze uh, muscle, fat, or skin with that or fat, liver, and kidney for chromium. We didn't have to do kidney in broilers, but we did in turkeys. Hmm. And basically, we've seen 
with broilers, no increase in chromium in the muscle. It does increase in liver somewhat, but not to the point that would create any type of human health concern. Yeah. In turkeys, they were a little different. We did see, and this is the only time we've seen this, a slight increase in muscle chromium. But in our con <clears throat> excuse me, controlled turkeys with no chromium added, their muscle chromium was lower than it had been in cattle or broilers. So it's almost like uh, chromium was limiting muscle growth. When we added chromium, then it increased to the point that what we've seen in other species, which is still a very low level in muscle. You're talking about uh, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 parts per million, which is very low in muscle. That's, that's really interesting to get a little bit of background on how that approval process goes. And I mean, obviously there's, there's a ton of work um, and so many different moving parts that go into all of that. And so I uh, appreciate a little bit of the insight and the snapshot at what, you know, some new tools in the toolbox for poultry nutritionists, turkey and broiler side of things. Um, anything that you want to kind of leave us with today? Well, other benefits that have been seen in broilers, uh, I mentioned increased stress muscle yield, but uh, there's also uh, studies indicating it can affect immune response. Uh, serum IgG and IgM concentrations uh, have been increased by chromium. Also, uh, when a foreign protein has been administered, such as sheep red blood cells, uh, antibody titer formation has been increased by chromium. And then also, there's some data indicating that it can affect gut, gut health particularly villus height, which is important in nutrient absorption. So those are the benefits really that have been seen in, in poultry. Uh, in turkeys, at this point, it's just an improvement in gain and efficiency. Immunity hasn't been looked at, neither has gut health. Oh, wow. So at least, um, so definitely some more work to be done um, on the turkey side, um, but exciting, you know, information to be sharing um, with our with our um, viewers and listeners out there. And so um, I guess, you know, in thinking about some of these responses, you know, being more in terms of from the stress side of the animal and um, thinking about animal welfare and ways to be able to market, you know, products or being able to make sure that the investment is going to go maybe an extra mile on an additive, having some benefit in that welfare area um, is, is really positive to share too. So, um, Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, it was really a, a great conversation and I, I learned a lot. And I'm sure that our readers and, and listeners or, or viewers and listeners have too. If any of our listeners out there are looking for a little more information on chromium, um, I think they, they can visit uh, the website at www.kimmon.com slash chromium. Definitely head there if you need some more information. Okay. Um, one question, since we are on the poultry nutrition black belt, it's my last question. Uh, Ch Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? <laughs> uh, Chuck Norris. Ah, good choice. <laughs> well, thank you again, Dr. Spears. Really appreciate your time today and your insight. And um, that, that leaves us with another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt podcast. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on next time. Thank you.